Hey everybody, welcome back to Anchored Sailors and Their Boats. So uh, it's been a while and that's because I've been out sailing and enjoying as much of summer as I can. Um, but today, today is a cool little adventure we're going on. We're going to go visit with Captain Neil Parker. Now Captain Neil Parker has been uh, sailing since he was a kid, got his captain's license by I think the age of 20, and has been working on restoring and sailing boats his entire life. Unfortunately, it's come time for him to have to sell one of his prized sailboats, and it's currently on the market, and that's what we're going to go see today. It is a very unique boat, and it has been modified by Captain Neil Parker into what it is now. And from what I can tell from the pictures, it looks really stinking cool. But it was once a cat boat. It is no longer a cat boat. Uh, however, you'll be able to see her cat boat heritage. In any event, if anyone can aesthetically uh, in a pleasing way, modify a sailboat. It's Captain Neil Parker. He has worked on some really tremendous boats and he actually does a uh, boat model restoration as well. Um, so we're going to go out to the mooring um, uh, and see this boat and check it out, kick the tires and tell you all the ins and outs of this boat and put all the information for uh, contacting uh, Captain Neil Parker uh, below. So come along. It's going to be a fun one. So I met Captain Neil Parker on the dock in Rockland and he picked me up in his Boston Whaler and we zipped out through the mooring field to find his boat and it was just the perfect main summer day, nice white clouds, blue skies and a brisk northwesterly and uh, here we are zipping through. That is not the boat we're going to go check out but it's a cool boat nonetheless. We are going to see this amazing boat. So come along, it's going to be fun. Okay, welcome back everybody. So we're out on a boat right now with Captain Neil Parker. He has been a licensed boat captain since the tender age of 20. And we're on this boat today, which I'll have him introduce in a minute because it's a very unique boat and probably the only one in the world just like it. Possibly. So, just uh, we, like it. Yeah, something like it. What's that? Just like it. Nothing just like it. Uh, and there's some very unique features which he's going to point out and he's going to tell you about the modifications he made to this boat. Um, but Captain Neil Parker has been restoring and working on boats for most of his life. And uh, if there's anyone who can modify this boat uh, to this level of perfection, uh, it is him. So, um, Neil, why don't you tell us what kind of boat this was and what it became? Sure. Uh, I had been in the schooner business since day one um, and uh, sold my big schooner, the Wendemine, gosh, it's got to be 20 years ago. Uh, maybe only 19. Anyway, once you've had the perfect vessel, it's very hard to find something to take her place. But right. I was just looking to downsize, and I've had a number of boats in the day sail business. Ultimately, uh, this was one of my early switches. I spent a life in wooden boats. I wanted to go to fiberglass because I woke up one morning and said, I may only have 12 springtimes left on this planet. <laughs> Uh, perhaps uh, I don't want to spend them outfitting a boat. The countdown was on. The countdown the was on. Jeez. Unfortunately, uh, what happened is I acquired fiberglass boats that needed restoration, and the thing that most fiberglass boats need restored is the wood used in their building. The fiberglass itself is seldom an issue where you can fix it by mixing two liquids together. Right. So um, the wood like in the trim or the core decking or yeah, any of that sort of thing. All that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I always admired cat boats. Uh, you sit in a large cockpit and you, you've got the cockpit of a vessel that's 40, 50 feet long. It's like sitting in the stern of a 60 foot schooner and only there's nothing forward of the mast. I can attest right. to that because we're sitting in this unbelievably comfortable cockpit at the moment and we'll get to that tour. But so yeah. um, what is this boat? Or okay. What was it? She started life as a Marshall 22 cat boat. Okay. I did not particularly want a cat boat. There are numerous reasons not to have a cat boat uh, this size. First of all is you've got a massive sail and you're doing short trips and you're handling the boat alone. Even with passengers, you're handling the boat alone. Um, I wanted a rig that gave me some options. So I designed her, redesigned her to be a sloop. Uh, basically took the spars I had, um, made new mass partners. Uh, Marshall has a sloop version of this that's somewhat different. I don't think it's as traditional or pretty. Yeah. Um, and now on a day like this, if it breezes up during a charter, uh, the, uh, you drop the jib and she goes like a 
like a reefed cat boat. You okay. Know, she'll keep but, going. but she's still gaffed rig, even she's though still she's still gaffed rig. Split. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is you need a foredeck. Yeah. I sail off and on the mooring. When you go forward and that boom is swinging around, if if you that mass is right in the bow, you uh, you don't stand a chance. No pun intended. You're yeah. going to be overboard. Yeah. You, there's no place to stand. Yeah. And as you can tell, Rockland Harbor never stops moving. So the boom never stops swinging back and forth. So when you race forward to pick up that mooring buoy or something, there's nothing to hold on to. So it I, looks like a nice size foredeck, actually. It, it's a convenient place. You can do anything up there. You can bring up an anchor. You can pick up your mooring. You can just let people sit up there and enjoy. It's um, perfect. I did, uh, I did put a larger mooring cleat on her than she originally had uh, because she does not spend her night in quiet places. Rockland is still an open roadstead. Yep. And so I put a larger cleat on the foredeck in a place that was a better angle to, to, to take the pressure to take the pressure and yeah. now you know if it blows i can always use that second cleat or go around the mast the mast is the original mast uh the boom is the original boom and gaff but i i cut them to length and are these wooden spars no these are aluminum these are aluminum yeah God, they look just like wood it's unbelievable yeah it's i i like a hand painted finish yeah and i use mostly uh Good enamel paints, you but can plug not whoever really you paints. want. That's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, you know, Benjamin Moore, Sherwin Williams make some good enamel products. Yeah. You know, chemically, they're probably identical to the marine stuff you were buying 20 years ago. Okay. You know, I think the only difference is, you know, how they maintain their sheen. Um, I, the worst part of this entire project was not cutting holes or replacing things or putting in lifeline stanchions. All these boats that I've redone, the interiors are usually a shambles. Somebody yeah. has unsuccessfully tried painting down there and nothing sticks, so it's coming off in sheets. Yep. And it's one of the most onerous jobs you can have is spending a couple of weeks down there with a sander and a vacuum and just trying to get ready for a decent coat of paint. It's brutal. It's yeah. brutal. Um, and so one of the reasons we're out here today, because I don't think I've mentioned it yet, is that this boat it's come time for, sadly, for you to sell it. Um, and so it is on the market. And what is the list price currently? Uh, I have her, uh, just for my cash investment, not time investment, 24000 That's somewhere between a Marshall 22 sloop in this condition and a Marshall 22 cat boat. Okay. Uh, she's in, I mean, structurally, she's in excellent shape. She has... The usual problems uh, the early marshals had, uh, I took care of most of that, the stuff that really mattered, um, and she she can take anything. I've had her out in over 30 right, knots. So, Neil, why don't you tell us a little bit about the dimensions of the boat and her year and sort of that pedigree kind of stuff? Sure. Uh, this, the Marshall 22s were some of the first traditional boats to be produced in uh, fiberglass, you know, replicas. Uh, like the, cat boats. And yeah, so cat yeah. boats, that sort of thing. It was the sort of the start of the return to traditional boating revolution. A number of people were doing them. Uh, the Marshall designs tend to have endured. Uh, this one was built... Uh, Commission 1969-1970. She really? was a cat boat. I know. When I started in this business, all the boats I sailed were older than me. Now, I'm older than most of the boats <laughs> I sail. It's a strange trade-off. Anyway, uh, she was a, she was a sloop. Uh, she had an active sailing career down in Cape Cod. Um, Are they built down in the Cape Cod area? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And. Uh, Marshall Marine's still down there. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, knew their fortune, and but they have a huge following. I mean... They, so they're still making these Marshall 22s yeah. today as the cat boat and a sloop version. Yes. Yeah. And along the way, of course, the company wow. realizes what works, what doesn't work, but the basic design is the same. They created a fairly traditional-looking cat boat. Yep. Um, what, if you were to say there are any differences, it's in a working cat boat, your bows are usually a lot beamier yep. uh, for two reasons. One is you have the, the weight of a solid wooden stick, a big stainless solid wooden stick in the bow, and you need to be able to support that weight. Yep. The other thing is when you 
any sailboat is going to try to drive her bows down. Yep. While she's sailing. And the center and of effort you, moves yeah, forward. Yeah. Yeah. You know that they, they, she just climbs down her own bow wave and will try to submarine. So by having fat, cheeky bows, um, it, it offered some support. And thirdly, you need a massive structure up there to support a mast. I haven't heard the term cheeky bow, by the way, or cheeky structure. That That's the the, yeah. the jowls on her almost. Yeah, you know. yeah. Well, I hate to say that about a lady, but. Yeah, no, like the, the Stephen Tabor, yeah. right? The, yeah. the schooner Stephen Tabor. You would refer to her as apple bowed. Apple bowed. Because it was like staring awesome. at an apple when you're staring at it straight on. The yep. dimensions were, you know, pretty much the same. <laughs> Um, that's fascinating. I had not know, heard that. And before. kettle bottom. That's the other term most people kettle? don't know. Kettle bottom. Bottom is flat as oh, a tea flat kettle. As a, okay. Yeah. I've uh, not heard that either. She, she's got a little bit of rise to her. Anyway. Uh, but her design was successful. Um, I felt the need to convert her because I was single handing. Uh, I wanted a self tending jib because yep. it's a pain to move people around and you really don't lose anything when you have a self-tending jib. Maybe a little bit in light airs, but once a boat reaches hull speed, it doesn't matter. Yep. Last year, my friend and I were having some matches and sea sprite sloops, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was only a test of skill till the wind was 10 knots. Then we were both doing five and a half no matter what we did. <laughs> so. Uh, the wind just takes over at that for the point. Yeah. yeah, for the convenience of not having to touch the jib, uh, I, I, I basically put it on a club. It's yep. a traditional hoisting sail, so I don't have to worry about a mechanism that fails me. Yep. Um, and it's a pleasure. I can tack right through the moorings here, and when I flip the wheel, you know, she'll come right around. You know, I don't have to mess with anything. It's it's hands free almost. Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic. The other thing I've adapted since my Thames. I had a Thames sailing barge, and uh, she was a 84-foot, 120-ton sailing vessel. And their their head sole, their jib, was actually shackled to a horse that ran across the deck. There was an iron ring yeah. around the horse, and then a wire pennant, and just shackled to the jib. It was set for close hauls, and that that That's was it. it. That's you don't amazing. touch it, and I don't touch my. My jib shoe. And you don't mean literal horse, just for the no, clarity no, a, sake wooden, for the... <laughs> a wooden horse. It was basically an eight-sided log, oak yeah. log, that went from one rail to the other. Yeah. It was about 20 feet long. So speaking of 20 feet long, how long is this boat? Ah, she is uh, 22 feet on deck. She has a 10 and a half foot beam. Wow. For this, for that length, that's amazing. Yeah. That's and, why this is such a copious space yeah. here. Yeah. And her depth, well, is about two and a half, three feet. She's a centerboarder. She is a centerboard. But uh, the centerboard is not there to offer any weight or stability. A lot of people make that mistake. The centerboard is entirely lateral about the resistance. lateral resistance and giving the boat a, a turning moment, a, yep. a place to turn What's on. she made out of the board? Uh, it's probably plywood okay. and uh, fiberglass. fiberglass. Yeah. Um, there's a massive bronze pin up in front. So no weight to it really other than the... What, yeah, when, when you build a board, it has to be le it has to be slightly heavier yeah. and denser than the water so, so it'll that it'll go down. Yeah. But you don't want it to be too hard to pull it up when the time comes. Right. This board, it, it's a job... It takes two people to pull it up when she's on the hard, when the boat's out of the water. But when she's in the water, you just give it a yank and up she comes. Just, that's amazing. So it really is just for the lateral resistance to be able to pivot to yeah. tack or jive. There is 800 pounds of ballast inside, but when you consider like uh, a sea sprite or something that has a 1,400 pound keel, yeah. you know, for the same length boat. So it's really the beam on this boat that keeps her stable. It's what they refer to as initial stability, the same thing that gives a ferry boat stability. Yep. Give, gives this thing stability. And with the ballast, uh, what is that? Is that included in the 22 feet, or is she longer with the? Uh, no, that the bowsprit is like another four and a half, five feet. Yeah, and so you're boot, really, yeah. you're really yeah. at a 27 foot, 28 foot boat. But the bowsprit's included in the price. <laughs> you don't have to pay extra for the bowsprit, just to be clear. But in terms of length overall, uh, you've got uh, a little extra length there. So she has the appearance of a much larger boat, not only because of the beam, but because of the bowsprit. Yeah. Um, 
the, okay, oh, sorry, go, ahead. go ahead. I was going to say, the other thing I did, uh, and I got some flack for it by catboat fans, is I put lifelines on her. And well, uh, safety first is my motto. Yeah, I, you know, she has small enough side decks. Yeah. And it just takes a moment of losing your balance. Yep. That uh, I figured that that was plenty important. Especially if you're doing day charters, it gives an extra sen sense of comfort to, and safety for your yeah. passengers. You know, even at that, I don't do a head count when we get back in because yeah. they can be really depressing. They signed that waiver. I wish. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, uh, one more question, then we'll do a tour, and that is, uh, would you say that this is a great overnighter, or could you go a little bit longer, like a weekender? Or... Oh, that, that's what they were built for. There's accommodations for three people down there. I'm sure yep. more people could sleep on deck. Um, yeah, you could certainly stretch out on one of these. I, uh, I did what I could to offer more privacy in the head the original models really didn't offer anything not so much as I a door a, a partition wall yeah. There. yeah and and uh i've also designed it so that when you're in the forward bunk you don't actually have to look at the the toilet oh, that's nice All right so there's some special features here that we're gonna go uh take a look at all right let's uh let's take a okay. tour all right so we're gonna start our boat tour here and what we're gonna see immediately is that uh, neil's got solar set up on this to trickle charge the battery i presume yeah i i don't run the engine very much is it a diesel yeah it's a diesel right under here oh, look at that now that's some good access to your engine oh Holy yeah fun. i had this out i had it unhooked in a day and a half and you know got it ashore had it gone through and put it back in is it a western so, beak yeah two cylinder 18 horsepower she'll do six knots with the bottom clean okay um, i built this uh, pinnacle stand for her for the compass and it also incorporates the uh i have not seen one quite like this yes it's very unique uh, it was a salad bowl well there you have it <laughs> it's main it's winter if you own a dremel you can do anything you can do just about anything all right let's uh let's start down below because sure. i'm anxious to see this um and so you've got uh one uh berth over here on starboard yeah this uh theoretically you, you could get double. two actually uh yeah well this is this leaf pulls oh. out yeah and you can slide the mattress out and somewhere i i believe is i have an piece? insert but this makes it a little more comfortable you know, even, yep. even just a pillow up there something similar happens uh on this fo on this forward one where when you're lying down you know, there, I have another little piece that goes in here, so it's you know, you're, you space. can, yeah. That's uh, slick. The, the head oh, yeah. is Let's here. Let's go take a look at the head there. All right, that's, that's Yeah, and that looks new. Install. It's very hard to retrofit a marine head and not make it look like a Windows 98 screensaver. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's, it's pretty good to get some ventilation empty. up here. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the other thing is the way the head door works, because there was originally no door here, I, I made this door out of an old one, and basically when you're sailing you can leave it like that, a magnet, yep. you know, latch hold it in place, but if you're using it you can leave it, and when you're sleeping in it you can hide the head, Perfect. And not, not have to leave it, it. yeah, so you're not staring at it, I think that's... Especially if you're prone to seasickness and you're staring at a toilet bowl all night. You're but it's like, there if it's, you need it. It's psychosomatic, you're going to yep. get sick. Um, you can see the bolts, these are the oh chain yeah. plates yep. uh, from the conversion and the Port construction. Here. This has all been uh, stripped out and repainted. And the uh, mast is uh, keel step. Yep, this is the step down here. There's something like six layers of, uh, let me see if I can get in there. This piece comes out, oh. you can sort of see the thickness of the step I put on. Yep. Is several gallons of epoxy and putting that together with marine ply and that's not going anywhere. No. So this is uh, just so I can step back and see this. This is the centerboard trunk here, which also yeah. serves as your uh, dinette table. So that yeah. comes up. Yeah. That's but so this clever. This stays up with that little latch thing there. Yeah, I love it. And then the galley. Um, it's not much. Anymore. It's not much, but you could. All you need, since you have the uh, lifelines. Well, I, you could get a, uh, you know, the, um, what's the uh, grill I'm thinking of that oh. everyone has? Well, I don't do the grill thing. You could do a little uh, Coleman. Let's see if I remember where I put this. 
been so humid. So these butane units are really nice. Oh, yeah. Just keep that stored down there. So you just slap that up yep. on deck or in the galley right here. Yep. And uh, this sink, while it has a like a four gallon water supply, yep. nobody should drink tank water from no, the boat. So no, you no, bring no. all bottled water. I when I put the mast in, I lost the use of these drawers, so I opened this up here. Okay. And that's where I keep bottled water and so on and so forth. Perfect. Perfect. This is fantastic. And um, while well, you're not going to have a dance party down here, it's certainly if uh, you're doing an overnight or you know you could certainly have plenty of space down here for you and a partner and and uh, and snacks and you even have the ship's bell I noted. Yeah. Perfect. In compliance. Um, and your switchboard here. Yeah, we, we redid the wiring that we had to, didn't get too fancy with replacing much of anything, but I had a marine electrician go through, new, okay. new VHF, okay. and... Uh, Does that have AIS to, or anything like that, or...? Mm, no. No, okay. No. That's, yeah. Uh, so, looking back at the uh, cockpit here, this is incredible. Uh, there's so much space here, and the and the combing in the cockpit is so high; it's about mid back when you sit down, maybe even a little higher. It's a great boat for kids, and yep. uh, between you and I, it, sailing can be miserable for children. Yep. And so, general rule of thumb, yeah, I let parents decide, but I did this with my own daughter. When you're in the cockpit, assuming it's a calm day, you can take the life jacket off. Stay we, in the cockpit, take yeah. it off. We have know, the same rule. If you go forward uh, out of the cockpit, life jacket goes yeah. on. So let's uh, let's sneak up and do a little look at the bow here. Sure. I'm gonna try to do this without falling in the drink here. Aren't you glad they're life like Yeah, those life lifelines are very handy. Uh, I love this bow sprit, and like you said, you've got a nice foredeck here, so people can come sit here. There's your uh, self-tacking mechanism for the boomed jib, um, and a nice anchor there. Is it all chain or does it go to... I've got about 20, 25 feet of chain and then 100 feet of line. In case the wind is blocking that, 25 feet of chain and 100 feet of line. So There's enough room on the foredeck. You know, I've kept the rig as inboard as possible. So yeah. when you're furling the jib, you're, simply, you're still on deck. No need to go out on the bowsprit. Look right? at that. Yep. It's all right here. You're snug inboard. Just uh, if you're doing it underway, Make sure you've secured the boom because it, it'll send you for it'll send you flying. Uh, and a classic old uh, boat hook here. Oh. That's excellent in keeping with the tradition of the boat. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I did on a lot of these on all of these cat boats, they leave the halyards back to the cockpit which usually means you're pulling at the at the wrong angle. It's twice as hard. Yeah. They also had microscopically thin you know, like lines three eighths there. lines. Yeah. And so I made up this uh, this pin rail here. So the halyards come down to the side. I can put the throat and the peak in my hands all at the same time. I have my quarter lifts here. And uh, that's perfect. You know, everything's handy. So I'm noticing um, just out in the harbor here with the boats going by and uh, she's just so stable. It's, it's like, a, I mean, it's just a big wide platform that's very comfortable. Yeah. It doesn't feel cramped. Uh, we used to sail on a, a Bristol 27 and it was just, you know, it was just uh, tight. And you're kicking each other when you're sitting in the cockpit because it was tiller, of course, so. Yeah. Um, but this is, this is slick. If I were to open this up, the shaft, There, there's a bar yep. that meet, meets this gear, yep. and that moves the rudder back and forth. It's about as simple as can be. Now, one one thing that I added to this after I sort of rebuilt the mechanism is I put the shaft brake on. I took apart an old binnacle yep. from, from a yacht, and I adapted it. We're, you know, you have to work out a little geometry because of the shaft angle and stuff. But and we're all good at math here. Yeah, yeah oh, so good. It's a guessing game. <laughs> but uh, I, that's really I can beautiful. Look. Actually, it's a, it's like a clock uh, in, in terms of the mechanisms yep. to it. It's really it's really beautiful. And um, 
it's easier to maintain, I reckon, than a quadrant with cables that you have to check for rusting yeah. and that sort of and thing. And you can get at it. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. right there. Uh, you're not down in a uh, very I, awkward fitting uh, so, location. So you, you've been in the lazarette hatch, I take it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Several times. <laughs> I have to go into a place like that. You know, I've got all my tools ready. Yeah. Right. First thing I take below with me. Abdul? My, no, my cell phone. Ah. Where I can call for help. <laughs> the problem is you gotta you gotta make sure you can get you should wear your cell phone like around a lanyard because if sometimes if it's in your pocket you can't. No, no, that's why I just I find a surface to uh, put it on within reach. Yeah, see that's when you accidentally knock it and it goes sliding down into the bilge forever yeah, to be lost. It's not perfect. It's not perfect, but you're right. Uh, well, Neil, this has been an awesome tour. I love this boat, um, and twenty four thousand dollars you could have an amazing. Uh, day sailor and overnighter and weekender and further afield if you're feeling um, close with your sailing partner or if That's you're going cool. solo. Uh, you can, this boat is easily uh, single-handed. I, I have her set up for that. I, yeah. I can get her underway in under 10 minutes. That's the kind of sailing we do around here, right? You, know, you got to make a break for when the weather's nice. And... Yeah. Sometimes you only have two hours at the end of a day. Yeah. You don't want to start messing with sail covers. I mean, that's a whole nother discussion. You don't want to start messing with anything. And you, you run the engine while you take the stops off. It right. works. You shut the engine off and you just go sailing. And, and Westerbeek diesels are pretty well uh, bulletproof if you maintain them well. Yeah. I, Do you have any hours around this one? Uh, when I got the boat, the engine had been rebuilt, but then laid up for five years. Okay. And it wouldn't start, wouldn't start. And it turns out, uh, after I did everything I, I could do, uh, my mechanic uh, said, well, you got to bring it to the shop, then I can't come work on it. So as I started to take it out, I realized nice mice had nested in the uh, air intake. Oh, shit. Yep, we'll and shoot. By then, the engine was half, halfway out. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so I had him go through Service. everything. And then I put it back in. and Okay. So uh, my stepfather is Westerbeek, and that thing has been running for 37 years now. Yeah. And it's just, it's unbelievable. Uh, and just quickly, lastly, uh, yeah. this Garmin, what are we looking at here? Is this oh, a chart plotter? Yeah. Um, it's a chart plotter. Uh, and um, oh, perfect. it yeah. also hooks up to a, a, the, the pedometer. Okay. And rather than drill a hole in the bottom, uh, I used the, the transducer it came with. On a fiberglass or steel boat, if you mount the transducer inside the hull in, uh, in silicon gel, uh, it will work. Okay. It, 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 you know, silicone's the same density so you don't as have water. the paddle wheel? No. Uh, yeah, no, so. no, 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 no. The, okay. the speed is from the GPS. That's what we have. Uh, but the only feature you don't have when you mount it inside the hull is you don't have the forward scanning. The sonar Which, version. You know, it, yeah. or the fish finder. Yeah. But you know what? The fish will find me. Well, you, we wanna. have the fish finder on, and it's kind of distracting. You see these little goldfish swim by when you're... <laughs> it's like a video game. Who it is. And, it is. you know, so so this is this is a decent little unit. Yep. Uh, I still... Get you to where you're going. It. I turn it on if it's foggy out. Otherwise, we still have paper charts, and we have a nice big space here to... To lay them out. Yeah. Um, all right, so... Just as a uh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, just as some closing comments uh, before we head back in, Neil's got to pick up a charter. If you're interested in this boat, we'll put the information in the description below, and uh, we'll put your contact information in there. Sure, sure. And uh, and you can work it out with Neil how uh, you want to come see the boat, and, and he'll tell you all the details on that. But or if um, you just want to come sailing, or if you want to just come sailing, uh, this looks like it'd be a fun sail, and I plan on doing that with Neil one of these days because this looks like a cool boat, and I've never been on a cat boat or a modified cat boat. Um, so we'll put the information in the description below. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Neil. This has been really cool. My, my pleasure. Thanks for coming out here. Wish you could come today. I know. Me too. I got to go back to the office. Darn it. All right. Uh, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.